Honorable Judges, Ladies and Gentlemen, Fellow Speakers. Today I would like to speak to you about something that is very important. It is so important, in fact, that you will depend on it when you are a baby, you will depend on it when you are a teenager, and you will depend on it when you are a senior citizen. What could possibly be so important? Your family! Today I'm going to talk to you about my family. You may be thinking, oh no, not another speech about bratty brothers and pesty sisters. But my family isn't like that. We are a collection of unique individuals with our own personalities and interests. We have been through many ups and downs, like most families, but the ups outnumber the downs by many. My family consists of six people. Mom and Dad, three girls, and one boy. I am the oldest. Being the oldest has its advantages and disadvantages. I get to stay up later than my brothers and sisters. I don't get hand-me-downs. And I get new privileges before the others. But along with privileges comes increased responsibilities. I am the one in charge when Mum goes out. And Dad looks to me for lunch on our busy Saturdays. Mum always tells me that I'm breaking new ground for myself and for my parents. They've never had an 11-year-old before. Let me introduce you to the members of my family one by one. First there is my dad. He always makes me laugh. Like the time he put a grape in his nose and asked for a Kleenex. <laughs> my grandma wasn't sure what to think, but I laughed. We love it when he plays shark in the pool and doesn't get angry when we kick him in the face trying to get away. <laughs> now that I'm growing up, he tells me grown-up jokes, then tells me not to repeat them. <laughs> he has been playing hide-and-seek with us since we were little. He would hide in places like under the bed or in closets, and then yell out help until we found him. Once, he stuffed my sister Melanie into the top shelf of his dresser. When we finally found her, there were creases in her cheeks from the tightness of the fit. Then there's my mom. Mom sometimes isn't as funny. But she's great for helping me solve problems, especially boy problems. And now that oversized fashions are in, she's beginning to lend me her clothes. I'm sure you all have stories about how your mom has embarrassed you, but nothing can be as embarrassing as when your mother teaches your health classes, especially at my age. <laughs> Sisters. First there's Melanie. Melanie has taught us all how to beg for a hamster. Now she organizes hamster hunts and has taught everyone how to clean hamster cages. But I can always depend on Melody to stay up with me when I have nightmares. And she gets me up in the morning for my shower. My other sister's name is Mandy. She is three years younger than me. Mandy and I share a room. We hope to get separate rooms in the near future. She, at night, she usually reads out loud, much to my complaints, because it's very hard to concentrate on your own novel when someone else is reading you theirs. A man has taught me how to use reverse psychology. I asked her to do the opposite of what I want done. Now we get along just fine. Last but not least, there's my little brother Mark. When he was born, I was so excited to have a baby brother that I took him to school for show and tell. <laughs> my brother's favorite expression when he's angry is, well, find it! He is a great model for my babysitting course, How to Deal with a Five-Year-Old. You may remember the movie Parenthood, when Grandma described family life as being a roller coaster with many ups and downs. Well, with my family, we make the Sky Rider at Canada's Wonderland look like a merry-go-round, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. Then, one day, my dad was driving us home from our paper room. 
He had driven us all around so we could deliver our papers instead of walking on that cold and snowy day. I said to my dad, thank you, Daddy, for driving us on our paper road. His answer took me by surprise. He said, okay, you can have a hamster. And all I did was thank him for the ride. A week later, when we got to the pet shop, there were so many little hamsters to choose from, I just couldn't decide. Finally, I found the one I wanted. He had been cuddled up in the corner and had looked up to see what all the commotion was about. He was beige and white and adorable. <laughs> he started scampering away because the girl at the pet shop was trying to pick him up. I could tell he was scared. Everyone could tell he was scared. He was put in a cardboard box and given to me. The box had holes in it so he could breathe. I put one side of the box against me so he could get used to my scent. As we were driving home, I kept on peeking into the box to see what he was doing. He was just sitting there. He was doing something else too. It's something hamsters do when they are scared. You probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whenever we would make a turn, Elvie would slide from one side of the box to the other. He probably thought that this was the end. He probably wished he were back in the pet shop with his brothers, sisters, and his parents. I wish I could have comforted him. When we got home, I had a lot of stuff to carry. I had a cage, wood chips, food, a dish, and a water tube for Elvie. Plus <coughs> Elvie. When we got settled at home, my mom, dad, and I got Elvie's cage ready and got him food and water. We tried to put him in his cage, but he wouldn't let us pick him up. He scampered all over the place. Finally, Mom caught him and gave him to me, but he jumped out of my hands, and thanks to Mom, she reached her arm out and caught him before he hit the ground. Boy, was that a close call. <coughs> we built him a nest on one side of the cage. He took one look at the wheel we had in the cage for him, and he tried to climb up the outside of it. I think he thought it was a ladder, but he wasn't getting anywhere. As soon as he discovered what it was, he moved his nest over beside his wheel. He ran all night in his wheel, and now every night he still runs in his wheel. Hamsters are nocturnal, you know. He's gotten out of his cage a few times. The whole house was in a panic, trying to find him. My part bloodhound brother and sister got down on their hands and knees and sniffed him out. <laughs> I have had a lot of fun with my hamster, and I really recommend them for pets. Thank you. Which means to leave quickly. 
and also the word lousy, which means bad. Have you ever wondered when you see someone on the street and they say hey, what they're really saying and how that expression came to be? As far as I can see it, the language develops according to the lifestyles of the times. For instance, in the 20s they said spiffy or swanky, which means elegant and fashionable. But now in the 90s, some could say you're in style. After the hardships of World War I, everyone who had lived in the 20s forgot about the troubles and concentrated on having a good time. There were many flappers, which was a name given to stylish young women, and the 20s were also known as the Roaring Twenties, and the expression flappers indicated the new styles, new slang, the new music, and the fun which was taking place. Today we are into both trends and fashions, and words which show this are music, <coughs> which means I approve, it's rad or it's radical, which means neat or cool, and totally cool, which again means stylish and neat. This language of the 90s comes from the lifestyles of some of the young people, mostly those who from, come from larger cities who like to rap and street dance. These people are influenced by other young people, such as the Friends and possibly many music groups. They are also real individuals. They all feel free to express their own feelings and to do their own thing. Perhaps the biggest influence on our generation today is music groups. How many of you here watched the Music Awards a few weeks ago? Did you see the many rap groups such as Velvet to Go, MC Hammer, and Vanilla Ice, and how they dressed? For example, they wore inside of jeans, shorts in the cold winter, and very baggy pants, and many other radical outfits. This is their expression of individuality, which doesn't make them weird people, but tells us how they feel like being different. Also, many other rap groups have influenced the way young kids dance and talk. On the other hand, there are people who dress to the other extreme. These people are called preppies. Preppies try to be as neat as possible. <coughs> they also wear the name brands, such as Gucci, Alfred Sun, and Polo. As you can see, interest in music influences the individuality of young people today, and this individuality causes changes in our language or method of expressing ourselves. These are only a few of the many expressions <coughs> that are in our language today. Perhaps you know many, many more. As you can see from the several examples I gave you, not only in the 90s, but also in the 20s, the fact that people develop their own way of saying things has not changed. What changes is the terms they use, and, we, and this change occurs decade after decade. Thank you.